There might be very few horror stories that did not employ the swamp as part of its creepy setting in one way or another. Swamps have been infamous for hosting dangerous and, according to most accounts in fiction, evil creatures. So people would usually get the chills whenever they pass by a swamp, or even worse, if they have to spend the night in a swamp. How much of that is true and how much of that is pure fiction? Well, this is what we're going to talk about in today's episode, Swamps, Features and Creatures. I am your host, Danny, and this is English Plus Podcast. We will talk about swamps, features, and creatures in today's episode, and we will learn 10 new words in context. Let me tell you about these words to whet your appetite a little, and then we will start with a story. Today's key words are intimidating, notorious, predilection, advocate, obsolete, perpetuate, heyday, arable, edifice, and nutriment. Are you interested? Of course you are. These are 10 interesting words that we're going to learn in context. But before we start, I would like to remind you that you can practice everything you're going to learn in today's episode on the website EnglishPlusPodcast.com. The link in the show notes will take you to the custom post I created for this episode that includes interactive activities for those of you who like doing everything digitally online. And for those of you who prefer paper, there's a PDF practice worksheet with fun exercises that will not only check your understanding of today's episode, but it also contains a part where you can review the previous four word power episodes. Trust me, your vocabulary bank will flourish if you practice and you will be able to express yourself better with every new word you learn from English Plus Podcasts Word Power episodes. And for those of you who want even more, you can become a patron of the show on Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon page in the show notes that you can go to and support English Plus Podcast and me as a content creator. And in return, our entire learning community will be grateful, but that's not all you'll get exclusive access to premium audio series, free coupons to my upcoming online courses, full access to all upcoming video series, which will start next week, and I will talk more about them in detail in the upcoming episodes, but I promise they're going to be exciting and useful. And more benefits are added all the time. Don't forget, the link to my Patreon page is in the show notes. So take the link, support me, support the show, and never stop learning with English Plus Podcast. And now, without further ado, let's start with our story for today, Swamps, Features, and Creatures. Swamps, marshes, and bogs live in legend as dark, damp, and mysterious places. Many a fictitious monster got its start in the ooze of a swamp on a dark, misty night. In reality... Swamps can be intimidating places. They often house creatures that sting, bite, and in extreme circumstances, kill. Swamps, or wetlands, as they are currently called, have been a source of interest for centuries. One of the first recorded public works projects was the draining of the Pontine Marshes near Rome, nearly 2,000 years ago. The Pontine Marshes were a notorious breeding ground for insects, and the Roman authorities wanted to remove this source of danger. 1,700 years later, this predilection to eliminate wetlands continued in the newly created United States Congress. Those who advocated such a policy convinced Congress to give 64 million acres of federal swampland to the states on the condition that the swamps be drained. One of George Washington's early jobs was to survey the dismal swamp in Virginia so it could be drained. Now scientists have begun to re-examine the role of swamps and the obsolete policies of the past. Recent research shows that marshes and swamps play a vital part in perpetuating a healthy ecosystem. For example, the coastal marshes along our shores help to purify water before it enters the water table. In addition, these marshes absorb pollutants from water as it flows to the sea. 
But you don't have to live near a coast to enjoy the benefits of a swamp. Read any of Mark Twain's stories of life during the heyday of the Mississippi River and you get a feel for what the river used to be like. Stretching back from the banks were huge swamps. When the river flooded, these swamps absorbed much of the extra water. Then people started to drain the swamps and build embankments to hold back the river. This allowed farmers and developers to uncover rich, arable land to create space to build new edifices for growing cities. But although the embankments prevented many smaller floods, the bigger floods overwhelmed the feeble earthen embankments. Specialized swamps called bogs harbor some of the most interesting plants in North America. Situated on acid-tainted water, bogs are usually covered by a floating mat of moss. But more interesting are the unique plants that live on the surface of a bog. Three of these, the pitcher plant, sundew, and Venus's flytrap, get essential nutrients by eating insects. The most interesting method is employed by the Venus's flytrap. When an insect is attracted to one of the V-shaped leaves, it brushes against trigger-like hairs, causing the leaf to clamp shut and trap the bug. After the insect is digested, the leaf reopens to await its next victim. As the modern science of ecology begins to shed new light on swamps, a new respect for their value to the environment is also developing. So, that was our story about swamps, features, and creatures, and I hope you learned something new about swamps that you didn't know about before. And, of course, we don't call them swamps anymore, we call them wetlands. But it doesn't matter whether you call them swamps, bogs, or wetlands. The most important thing is that I hope you learned something new about swamps, wetlands, or bogs, or whatever you want to call them. And now, we have 10 words, because this is a word power episode, remember? We're going to talk about 10 words in context, and let me tell you about these 10 words. These words are intimidating, notorious, predilection, advocate, obsolete, perpetuate, heyday, arable, edifice, and nutriment. Are you ready to learn? Of course, I'm going to tell you about the words, but first, I'm going to ask you a question and give you four options and give you some time to think about the options Try to guess the meaning on your own, and then I will explain the words to you. Interested? Of course you are. Now, let's get to it, and let's start talking about the very first word, and this word is intimidating. That's coming next. Don't go away. So our very first word is intimidating. I-N-T-I-M-I-D-A-T-I-N-G. Intimidating. Let's take a look first. Before I ask you the question, let's take a look at how we used it in context. We said, in reality, swamps can be intimidating places. They often house creatures that sting, bite, and in extreme circumstances, kill. So we're talking about intimidating. What does it mean? Do you think it means friendly, encouraging, inspiring, or frightening? What is it going to be? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. For those of you who thought frightening, you're absolutely right, because that is the essence of intimidating. But intimidating is a little bit more than that. If you describe someone or something as intimidating, you mean that they are frightening, but not only frightening, they also make people lose confidence. We use that, for example, in chess games. Sometimes two players are kind of the same level, but one of them is really intimidating, like Magnus Carlsen now or Garry Kasparov in the past. They were intimidating and their opponents, although they were very strong grandmasters, they would lose confidence and make blunders and lose their games because these two are so intimidating. I'm not saying they're not good players. They're great players, maybe the greatest ever, but... I'm saying is that they were intimidating, they were frightening, that would make people lose confidence. But of course, the base meaning is frightening or alarming, terrifying, menacing, if you will. That's also a synonym for intimidating. And that was our first word. I hope you like our first word. And now for our next word, notorious. 
N O T O R I O U S. Let's take a look first at how we use that in context. We said the Pontine marshes were a notorious breeding ground for insects, and the Roman authorities wanted to remove this source of danger. So, when we talk about notorious, what does it mean? Does it mean valued for their medical uses? Does it mean respected? Does it mean disguised or hidden? Or does it mean well-known for unfavorable reasons? So, which one do you think is the meaning of notorious? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought well-known for unfavorable reasons, you're absolutely right. To be notorious means to be well-known for something bad. Synonyms for notorious are words like infamous. Remember, famous is famous whether for something good or bad. Popular is always for something good. But when we talk about infamous, infamous is famous, but for something bad all the time. Okay, so here, that's the meaning of notorious. Notorious means to be well known for something bad. And here, remember, we talked about those marshes being a notorious breeding ground for insects. So not famous for something good, right? Famous for something bad, breeding ground for insects. That was our word notorious. And now let's move on to our next word, predilection. Well, this word is a little bit difficult to spell, so pay attention to the spelling here. It is P-R-E-D-I-L-E-C-T-I-O-N. Predilection. So, what does it mean? But first, let me just remind you of how we used it in context. We said 1,700 years later, and here we were talking about draining swamps, right? So 1,700 years later, this predilection to eliminate wetlands continued in the newly created United States Congress. So we have the word predilection. What does it mean? Does it mean opposition, preference, dislike, or lack of interest? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Looking to enhance your English skills while exploring a world of knowledge? Then English Plus Podcast website is just for you. Dive into diverse topics ranging from science to literature, history to business, and myths to modern insights. Each episode from our podcast or article from our magazine is a journey of learning and discovery designed to not only improve your language skills, but also broaden your understanding of the world. Join us at English Plus Podcast, where language meets limitless learning. Tune in today and take your English to the next level. Visit EnglishPlusPodcast.com to start your journey. English Plus Podcast, language, learning, enlightenment. Never stop learning with English Plus. Now, for those of you who thought preference is the answer, well, actually, it is. If you have a predilection for something, you have a strong liking for it. It's like this kind of taste, or you have a weakness towards something, or liking, or predilection. Remember, that's a new word. I will have to say this is a formal word. You wouldn't want to use it in everyday language or in speaking, but in writing, it is such a strong word to use where appropriate to make your writing a lot richer. Not just talk about preference or liking all the time. You have a new word now to use. It is predilection. And remember, it is spelled P-R-E-D-I-L-E-C-T-I-O-N. That's the new word, predilection. And now let's move on to our next word, advocate. A-D-V-O-C-A-T-E. And by the way, here I'm pronouncing it advocate because it's a verb. If it is a noun, we would say advocate. But that's not the problem here. It is used as a verb. It is advocate. Let me remind you how we used it in context. We said those who advocated such a policy convinced Congress to give 64 million acres of federal swamp land to the states on the condition that the swamps be drained. So which word could best replace advocated? Do you think opposed 
could replace advocated here? Supported, ridiculed, or attacked. So opposed, supported, ridiculed, or attacked. Which word could best replace advocated in the context we just talked about? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought supported is the answer, congratulations, you're absolutely right. That's the essence of advocate. If you advocate a particular action or plan, you recommend it publicly. You recommend that thing, you support it, you encourage it. And that's exactly what happens when we talk about policies in Congress and even in other places. But remember, we're talking about public support here. Public support, rallying for something, whatever. You try to support this thing. You try to make it happen. You advocate because you believe in it, right? So that's the meaning of advocate. And now let's move on to the next word, obsolete. O-B-S-O-L-E-T-E, obsolete. Let's remember how we use that in context. We said now scientists have begun to re-examine the role of swamps and the obsolete policies of the past. So they're talking about some policies in the past that was usually drain the swamps, drain the swamps. They're bad places. They're notorious. They're bad. And now here in this context, we're calling it obsolete. So what does it mean when we talk about obsolete? Are we talking about something outdated or old? Are we talking about something expensive? Are we talking about something scientifically proven or something successful? What do you think obsolete means? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought outdated or old, you're absolutely right, because that's the meaning of obsolete. Something that is obsolete is no longer needed because something better has been invented or because it proved wrong or whatever. But there is something new that proves that this measure or this technique or or even this machine is no longer needed because something new replaced it or some new discovery or some new theory replaced it. Because here we're talking about policies, right? We're not talking about machines, but it's the same concept. We're talking about outdated, old, or even sometimes ancient things. That's the meaning of obsolete. And that was another word we focused on in today's episode, swamps, features, and creatures. And the next word is perpetuate. P-E-R-P-E-T-U-A-T-E, perpetuate. First, let's remember how we use this word in context. What did we say? We said recent research shows that marshes and swamps play a vital part in perpetuating a healthy ecosystem. So which word could best replace perpetuating in this context? Do you think we can use the word eliminating, destroying, preserving, or forgetting. So, what do you think? Which word could best replace perpetuating in this line? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought preserving is the answer, it is actually the answer, the meaning of perpetuating. If someone or something perpetuates a situation, a system, or belief, they cause it to continue. Like, to maintain, to preserve, to sustain, to keep up. That's the meaning of perpetuate. Now, I will have to tell you that we usually use it for a bad thing, for a bad situation, a bad system, or a bad belief. But here in our context, we're talking about a healthy ecosystem, which is not a bad thing, of course. So it is not always used to talk about a bad thing, but most of the time, we use perpetuate to talk about a bad system, situation, or belief. When someone or something perpetuates a bad situation, a bad system, or a bad belief. But not all the times. I will have to say not all the times. And that was our word, perpetuate. And now let's move on and talk about the next word, heyday. It is H-E-Y-D-A-Y. Heyday. How do we use that in context? In context, we said, read any of Mark Twain's stories of life during the heyday of the Mississippi River and you get a feel for what the river used to be like. Now, when we talk about heyday in this context, what does it mean? Does it mean dry season, harvest season, period of greatest popularity, or valley? What do you think the answer is? Think about it and I'll be right back with the answer. (laughs) 
Now, for those of you who thought period of greatest popularity, you're absolutely right because that is the answer. Someone's heyday or like here, a place's heyday or something's heyday is the time when they are most powerful, successful or popular. And that's exactly what we're talking about here when we talk about Mark Twain's stories during the heyday of the Mississippi, the prime time of the Mississippi. That's the meaning of heyday, but that's not our last word for today. We still have a couple of other words. And the next word is arable, A-R-A-B-L-E. Now, let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said this allowed farmers and developers to uncover rich arable land and create space to build new edifices for growing cities. So let's focus on arable here. Which word could best replace arable in this context? Can we use farmable, desert, unproductive, or useless? Which is the word that could best replace arable in this context? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought farmable is the answer, you're absolutely right, because that's what it means. Arable farming involves growing crops such as wheat and barley rather than keeping animals or growing fruit or vegetables. Arable land is the land that is used for arable farming. So we're talking about farmable places in a nutshell. We're talking about productive, fertile, fruitful. That's what arable means. And within the same sentence, we used another word that I would like to focus on in today's episode, and that is edifice. E-D-I-F-I-C-E, edifice. Let me remind you again, so maybe you forgot how we use that. We said this allowed farmers and developers to uncover rich arable, remember arable, okay, arable land and create space to build new edifices for growing cities. Well, what is this word? Think about it. Which word or words could best replace edifices in this context? Can we use things to eat, farmlands, buildings, or lakes? I know it's a fancy word for one of those common words that we can use instead, of course. But remember, we're learning new words. We're learning new words to add to our active vocabulary bank to make it as rich as it gets, right? But let's get back. Which word or words could best replace edifices in this context? Things to eat, buildings, farmlands, or lakes? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the answer. Now, for those of you who thought buildings could best replace edifices in this context, you're absolutely right. That is the answer. An edifice is a large and impressive building, actually. It's not just any building. It's a large and impressive building. And remember, we said create space to build new edifices for growing cities. We're talking about city building. So we're talking about big and impressive buildings, edifices, all right? Now, of course, basically it means buildings, but not any building. It's large and impressive. And now we are left with our very last word for today, and that is nutriment. N-U-T-R-I-M-E-N-T. Let's take a look at how we use that in context. We said three of these, the pitcher plant, sundew, and Venus's flytrap, get essential nutriments by eating insects. So what are we talking about here? Which word could best replace nutriments in this context? Can we use nourishments, seeds, poisons, or rocks? Which one do you think is the correct answer? Think about it, and I'll be right back with the right answer. Now, for those of you who thought nourishments, you're absolutely right. A nutriment is any material providing nourishment. It's just another word for nutrition, but nutrition is the whole thing, is a big thing, right? Nutriment is any material providing nourishment. And with that word, we come to the last word in today's episode. And let me remind you again, today we talked about swamps, features, and creatures, and we talked about 10 words in context. We talked about intimidating, notorious, predilection, advocate, obsolete, perpetuate, heyday, arable, edifice, and nutriment. I hope you can add these words to your active vocabulary bank and use them where appropriate, of course. Some of them, I will have to say, they're more appropriate in writing than in speaking, but they're all usable. They're all going to make your use of the language richer and more sophisticated. But by just listening to the podcast, well, 
you're not going to really get there. If you don't practice the words you're learning, especially new words, words you've never heard of before. If you don't practice these words, you will forget them pretty soon. Trust me, now you may know all the words, and, and that's very good, of course. That I'll feel proud of myself that I was able to present these words in easy-to-understand ways. But that's not enough. You need to practice these words in order to remember them, to maintain them in your active vocabulary bank. And the way to do it is to practice, right? And I got you covered. I have a lot of practice on my website. And it's not just on my website. There's a link in the show notes that will take you to a custom post I created for this episode. And in the post, you will find, of course, Swamp's Features and Creatures, the story itself. You will see the words. But more importantly, you will have interactive activities. Activities that you can use to practice what you learned directly on the website. Digital activities, if you prefer to do these things online on your phone or on your computer. But if you prefer pen and paper, I also got you covered. There's a PDF practice worksheet with activities like crossword puzzles, word searches, and other interesting activities that will not only cover the words from today's episode, but there's also a review part that will cover the previous four episodes. The previous four word power episodes, of course. And that will be just great to remember these words that you learned earlier, but now you can do them in a game, in a crossword puzzle, or in a word search. Or, of course, there are some multiple choice questions to make sure that you really understand these words and you never forget them. There's a lot of value on EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Not only this post, there's a lot of other things that you can use, you can learn. There are the short reads, there are the audio series, and very soon the video series. And while you're there, you can check out my vocabulary building book series. The book series is great for those of you who are trying new words for your SATs or some international exams, or just you want to learn new words in context. It's not going to be just like the word and definition, right? There will always be a context for you to remember the words. And by the way, you can sample the books. You can see a sample of the book before you go to Amazon and buy them. So just go there, check out the books, check out the online courses, check out the other content I post on EnglishPlusPodcast.com. But of course, more importantly, there's this link in the show notes that will take you directly to this custom post that you can use to practice what we talked about today. Now, that being said, that'll be everything for today's episode. I would like to thank you very much. This is your host, Danny. I will see you next time.